Hello, everyone. I'm Angeline, and I'm Sam. Welcome to English Digest. So, in today's episode, we're going to be writing a narrative about a time I got lost, or oh. more like you got lost. It's like <laughs> mentally or physically. <laughs> <laughs> yes, both, I guess.、Yeah. <laughs> But I think in this case, because based on the example writings that we got, I think it's a f- like physically that you got、mm-hmm. lost. <laughs> Yeah. Have you experienced this before, Sam?、Um, yeah, I remember the、mm-hmm. time when I was studying Portugal,、mm-hmm. and that was the time when we don't have smartphones or Google、oh, Maps. Okay. Yeah, thankfully Portuguese they're like super friendly. They're super so, friendly. Yeah. So, and you were able to speak Portuguese to ask them for directions.、Um, they actually speak like really fluent. English. English. Oh, yes, okay.、Yeah. So it's okay for you to get around in Portugal without yes, yes, lo- yes, knowing、yeah. Portuguese. Okay. So, so what actually happened?、Um, did you take a wrong turn, or were you like wandering around? How did you get lost? Actually, I just got out from like my hotel,、mm-hmm. and、uh, it's like like lots of like small alleys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I went into one of them, and、mm-hmm. then I. I, I like、uh, how, how do I go back to my hotel?、Like、I was lost. <laughs> I was looking at my map. Like,、yeah. where am I?、Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how long did it take you to kind of get your way around? Or I think to it takes a lot. About like five minutes is not really long, but、okay. like mentally, you were yeah. scared. Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> a little bit worried, right? Yeah, and yeah. that there there was a stranger like came to me and he said like. Um, do you need help? Oh, you looked、yeah. lost to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you want to go? Oh, that's like, very、oh. nice that they're very helpful. Yeah, it can be quite scary to get lost.、Mm-hmm. Um, you lose your sense of direction, right? Like you don't know is your hotel in the front, behind you, on the right, on the yes, left, right? Yes, yes. And you have no idea where you are and actually where to go from here. If you、mm-hmm. don't know where you are, you don't really know where to go yes, after yes. that, right? Well, writing about a time you got lost doesn't have to be as scary as the experience itself. We're here to point you in the Right direction to complete this writing exercise.、Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at our writing prompt. 好，马上来看到我们今天写作的提示了。今天呢，就要写一下自己呢有没有过这个迷路的经验哦。从小到大呢，你可能有迷路或是走失过，就算只有短短的几秒钟，哎，那种呢找不到熟悉的人、熟悉的路的时刻，哎，一定呢都曾让你不知所措、哦。请描述一次呢迷路的经验，并说明此次经验背后的原因、过程、当时的感受以及最后的结果，还有呢对你的影响。那文长呢至少要一百二十。Okay, so when you were little, you may have got lost in that moment when you can't find a familiar face, or where your surroundings become unfamiliar, or when your surroundings become unfamiliar, you probably feel frightened and you don't know what to do. Today, we're going to write an essay about the experience of getting lost. Okay, so explain what led up to this event, your thought process as it was happening, your feelings, how you managed to get yourself out of the situation, and the impact this. Experience has had on you. The essay should be at least 120 words and should be separated into two paragraphs. Okay, so unless you're a walking Google map or you're an extremely timid child who never wandered off alone. Ever, you've definitely experienced what it's like to be lost, even if just for a second. I remember when I was young, I was told to stay where I was so my parents could find me in the event I got lost.、Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good tip if,、yes. for you guys,、um, and also if you guys have kids in the future, just tell your kids to stay put, don't move. Back in the day before smartphones were common, the way to locate your parents was to go to the information counter.、Mm-hmm. Is this、yes. something that happened in Taiwan? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you go to the information counter at a mall or a supermarket and have the staff page for your parents through the intercom. Yes, it's. I, I think it's still the same. Yeah, thing. it yeah. probably is because some kids don't have cell phones, especially、yeah. if they're really young. So then you'll hear on the intercom.、Um, they usually don't say the child's name because for privacy reasons、yes. and also for security reasons. But they'll say, you know,、um, we found a child that's wearing a red shirt, or you know, you know, they kind of give some. Um, information about yes, the child,、yes. yeah. <laughs> so now with advanced technology, parents can even put a GPS tracker on their kids, so、mm-hmm. they know where they are at all times. Doesn't it sound kind of scary, like putting GPS trackers on your kids? It is a little bit. Okay, well, you know what? My biggest fear is 
It's actually getting lost in a place like a forest. Ah, uh, ha、uh-huh. ha. Okay, that is absolutely terrifying. Sometimes the forest can be so dense it can be hard to locate a person, even with the help of like helicopters. So if you ever decide to go for a hike, I think it's really important to make sure everyone knows where you're going. Pack some food, a flashlight, a first aid kit, etc. Because you never know what may happen along the way.、Mm, yes, I heard a lot of stories、mm-hmm. how people get lost in the woods. Yeah, it's it's a serious thing. Like make sure you're well. Prepare before you go hiking. Exactly. Okay, so by now, hopefully, you've been able to recall a time that you got lost. It's time to think about how we're going to write this essay. As our title suggests, we are writing a narrative. Okay, so narratives are the most widely used style of writing, and it's often used to describe an experience or event, an object or a person. In this narrative essay, you're telling a story based on your personal experience. 今天呢，我们就要描述的这个一个故事哦，所以呢，顾名思义，它就是一篇叙述文了。叙述文呢是一种运用非常广泛的文体哦，它非常常出现在这个考题当中。可能呢，它是要你这个描述经验或是事件，比方说呢，像是今天的文章哦，就要你来描述你迷路的经验，或者是呢，它也可能是要考你哦，描述物品，例如呢，这个你收贵最珍贵的礼物是什么这样子的题目。那另外呢，也很长哦，要来描述人物，比方说呢，你最好的朋友。有你的楷模等等呢、哦？那上述的这些题目呢，都是属于这个叙述文了。那不管是什么文章呢，包含今天的叙述文也是呢，我们的作文还是要有这个起承转合了。也就是呢，我们英文文章所说的。引言 introduction, 文章主体 body, 以及这个最后要给他下一个结论 conclusion. Okay, so regardless of what type of essay you're writing, you should always have an introduction, a body, and conclusion, as what Sam said. So in the introduction, you will present the ideas that you are going to talk about in your composition. Here are some ideas you can discuss in your introduction.、Um, maybe what did you think of this experience before it happened? For example, maybe you thought you'd never get lost, or that even if you got lost, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Okay. So you were really confident that、mm-hmm. you know getting lost was never something that would happen <laughs> to you, or that it would be very easy for you to solve this problem. You can also talk about what people generally think about this topic. For example, you might say it's not uncommon for kids to get lost at some point during their childhood.、Mm-hmm. Your introduction will also have your thesis statement, which is the sentence or two that explains what the article is going to be about. 好，首先呢，马上看到了 introduction 呢，就是我们文章的引言哦，最开头的部分。那说明呢，书写此篇文章的动机。那全文的这个主旨句哦，通常呢也会在这段点出来呢，让读者呢一看，马上呢就知道，哎，今天呢我们这篇文章要说的是什么了。那以今天这篇这个描述经验的文章来说呢，建议大家可以用这几种方式呢来写你的引言，来开头你的文章。你可以说一说呢，在这个经验发生之前哦，你对这个经验保持着什么样的看法？比方说呢，觉得说，哎，我怎么可能会迷路呢？然后呢，我们再带出来，你真的迷路之后有什么不同的感受？或是呢，我们也可以说一说，哎，一般人对于这个经验有什么样的看法？比方说呢，我们可以用这个俗语啊、谚语来开头，或者说，哎，这个小朋友呢，通常都是很容易迷路的，这样一般人的看法来开头。那我们也可以呢，说一说，来讨论这个经验呢，对你个人的意义是什么？那呢，我们先把意义讲出来，后面呢，再带出来你要讲的这个经验是什么，也可以哦。Okay, and the body of the essay is where we're going to share your story. Okay, so you'll want to address when, where, who, why, how. You can describe the order of events in chronological order, or use flashbacks. So a flashback is a scene that takes the narrative back in time from the current point in the story. A flashback is useful in stories that involve characters' memories or large leaps in time. So just remember to be consistent with whatever tense you use in your flashback. Another thing to keep in mind in the body of the essay is that you'll want to include background information that will help the audience understand the story better. Okay, so you'll want to provide other supporting details to make the re- reader more involved in the story. So when your audience reads the essay, they should be able to see the things you saw and feel the feelings you felt. Don't include any irrelevant details, though, as you might confuse the reader or make them lose focus of what's important. 好，那接下来呢，我们就要写到这个 body， 也就是呢，我们文章的主体了。那通常呢是叙述这个故事发生的经过。那提醒大家在写作的时候呢，可以常常问自己时、事、人、地、物这几个问题了。比方说呢，是什么时候发生的，在哪里发生。
，有谁参与，为什么会发生，如何发生，最后结果是什么，等等等呢、啊？那别忘了呢，我们要让这个故事精彩哦。我们呢，记得就要多描述相关的细节，比方说事件发生的这个当中，或是发生后你的感受如何 ？OK， 或者是呢之间有什么人物，有什么事件，我们呢都可以这个多加描述哦。那记得呢，因为我们是在讲故事哦，所以通常是发生在过去了。我们呢，通常是以这个过去时态为主。那不管呢，你是按时间顺序呢，顺顺的把故事讲完，还是用刚刚这个 Angelina 老师提到的这个倒叙法，无论是什么样的方式，都要注意到时态的一致性哦，千万呢不要让这个读者混淆了。Mm、hmm. So you, feelings that you might feel when you were, you know, when you were lost at that time、mm-hmm. might be, you know, terrified. You were terrified. You were afraid. You were nervous, maybe, nervous, because、yes. you were kind of scared. Like, oh, who am I going to ask for directions, or or who am I going to ask to help me? Maybe you'll feel happy. <laughs> It's possible <laughs> that you're lost and you feel happy because you're like, yes, I have independence. I can finally do whatever I want. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you guys are gonna feel, but everyone will feel something different, and that's why it's important for you to put those feelings in, and you know, to describe everything that happened when it, you know, at, during that time when you were lost. So you will end your essay with a conclusion. Okay. So the purpose of the conclusion is to sum up everything you've been talking about and explain the significance of this experience. So if you're struggling to come up with a conclusion, read through your intro and body and ask yourself, so what? Okay, what message are you trying to convey? In this essay, you can talk about how this experience changed you or influenced your future actions. 嗯哼，最后呢，别忘了呢，我们要给这个文章下一个结论哦。你呢，可以说说这个经验给了你什么样的启示，你有什么样的体悟啊，或者说，哎，这个经过这个经验之后，自己有了什么改变或影响等等都可以。那如果你在写作写到这个结论的时候卡关了，有困难想不出来，那严卓俊老师呢，提醒大家哦，可以把自己前面写好的文章读一遍。OK， 你从头读到最后呢，可能对于这个结论就会有一些想法喽。Mm-hmm. So maybe in your conclusion, you'll say you will never ever let go of your mom's hand <laughs> in the mall because you don't ever want to get lost again, or that you'll never, you will never be brave enough to go out of this, go leave your house by yourself. I don't、mm-hmm. know. It can be pretty terrifying to get lost. I mean,、yeah. from your experience,、um, did you? Feel like you learned a lesson or anything? Yeah, it's kind of like、um, because I was a student. Okay. So it feels like I am like growing up a little. Okay. Like I get to like talk to a foreigner and、mm-hmm. actually find my directions. Okay. So I feel like okay, so I can handle this. Okay.、Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't a bad experience for you to get lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nothing bad happened. Nothing bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right.、Yeah. Nothing bad happened. Okay, so you had a good experience and you were lost.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the one time I. I got lost. It was in a. I would say it's kind of like a small pharmacy.、Mm-hmm. It's kind of like a pharmacy, but they sell a lot of things in the store. It's not a very big store, but for somebody who's young, like a, a young child, it can feel overwhelmingly big、yes. at times. <laughs> okay, so I would say it's probably equivalent to like the size of a PX Mart, a、okay. Chenlian in Taiwan. Yeah. So and and every aisle was filled with stuff. It was it was kind of a narrow. It's, it's kind of crowded, and the aisles are kind of small and narrow. And those shelves are like quite really tall. tall. Yeah. yeah. So I remember I was in this shop and. My parents were looking at something, and I wandered off, being the child that I am. Most children like to wander、yes. off and look at other <laughs> things, right? And I was so sure that I could wander off and go back to that same aisle that I that my mom was at.、Mm-hmm. So I left the aisle, and I I was like, no, she's gonna be there when I go back, right? And then I I probably left for about five minutes, and when I went back, she wasn't there, <laughs> and neither was my dad. And I was like, oh no! So then I started walking through every aisle, and then you know how you kind of just look down the aisle, and you're、mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, there's nobody. You go down the next aisle, there's nobody. You go down the next 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 aisle, and you're like, there's nobody. Where did they go? <laughs> and you know when you're a kid, you kind of don't have common sense, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, did they leave without me? Did they forget that I was in the store with them? Oh my gosh, did they? Drive off? Do they go home? How am I gonna go home? You just start freaking out. <laughs> and then finally, I did the same thing. I went back and checked through every aisle, every aisle, every、mm-hmm. aisle. And then finally, I saw my parents. But it wasn't a very long time that I was lost. Maybe like ten minutes. But that ten, those ten minutes felt like an hour. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So getting lost can be scary. And I think there's a lot of、um, emotions and just a lot of things that you can talk about in your essay. There's a lot of like description and vivid imagery that you yes, can put yes, in there. Yeah, yeah. Especially like describe how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you said, like、uh, those five minutes is like forever. <laughs> yeah. It feels like it's a long. 
long time. Yeah. yeah. So now that we have a general idea of how we're going to write this narrative paper, it's time to put our outline together. So writing an outline can be just as important as the essay itself. It can help you organize your ideas into a logical order that makes sense. Now, outlines can also help you identify where gaps in your thinking may exist and whether you have sufficient evidence to support each of your points. Now, let's take a look at the sample outline provided in the magazine. Okay, so our topic sentence one, it says, I'll never forget a time I got lost. Now, this is a good topic sentence. It's concise. It's to the point. It tells the audience exactly what this essay will be about. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then it gives supporting information. What happened? during that time you got lost. Well, it said, the writer says, I used to run errands for my parents when I was young. I always went back home the same way. One day, I decided to take other alleys. And finally, I got lost. Mm, bad decision. <laughs> mm -hmm. OK, 马上看到我们这个范例文章了，在这边呢，它的主题句呢，开头哦，就非常的明确了，它马上就讲说，我永远呢不会忘记哦，这个我走失的那一次经验。马上呢，我们就知道说，哎，今天的主题呢，它就是
Now I always pay attention to where I am and where I'm going. Okay, that was our basic sample. Now I've had a similar experience to the writer as well. I tried to take a shortcut, only to find myself lost and confused. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I have a pretty good sense of direction, and I can orientate myself quite quickly when I need to get somewhere. Mm -hmm. But in Taiwan, not all roads are through roads. I'm sure you guys all know yes. that, right? <laughs> There's a lot of dead ends, especially when you when we're talking about alleys. It's yes. like suddenly you walk down an alley and boom, it's a dead end. There's like a house there. <laughs> yeah. So I remember walking parallel to a street I usually walk on. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I like to kind of like look around at my surroundings. So sometimes if I walk down the same street all the time, I kind of get bored. And I'm like, oh, let's take a look at this street. What's okay. down this street, right? <laughs> like, what is there to eat? What is there to buy? And then, you know, I only realize that, okay, there's a reason why nobody takes this road because it's a dead end. Okay. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I, I, I don't have a like, very good sense mm. of direction. I can even get lost in video games. Oh. <laughs> Video games can yes. be very confusing, yeah. actually. So, so I would stick to what I'm familiar mm -hmm. with, or like simply take a taxi. Yeah, yeah. that's a, a safe way to go, yeah. right? Not when I was a little boy. Like now, I can. Now take you a taxi, can take yeah. a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> so, in this writing sample, we learned that this writer used to run errands for his or her parents. Now, when errand is a small job that involves going to collect or deliver something, mm -hmm. okay, it's like going downstairs, um, going to the Seven Eleven to buy a carton of eggs or yeah. getting some milk. You know, it's very straightforward task that requires a short trip or travel journey. So sometimes it might involve you walking a little mm -hmm. bit or taking riding your bike. You know, when you get older and you go into the workforce, you might be doing errands. You might run errands for your company, like going to the bank or um, going to the post office to send something. These are all errands. Errands 这个名词就表示差事、跑腿哦。那其实跟中文很像的英文里，我们觉得搭配就是 run。OK， 跑步的这个动词哦 ，run errands 处理差事或是跑腿哦，不是很大的事情。比方说我们刚刚说顺道买个饮料啦，去便利商店缴费啦等等哦，这种程度大小的事情。那英文里面呢也有这个说法哦 ，errand boy。OK， 就是负责跑腿的，也就是呢我们说的工具人了。Okay, so you might also want to differentiate between a main road and an alley, right? We were talking about that in our base example.、Mm -hmm. Instead of taking the main road, he took the alley. A main road is a major road, typically one with a large amount of traffic. Okay, so you'll see a lot of cars going through. You know, there'll likely be traffic lights, pedestrian crosswalks, a lot of shops. An alley is a narrow street between or behind buildings. Okay, most of the time it's not used by cars, but I find that in Taiwan people still manage to find yes their way in an alley. <laughs> <Yeah> . Okay, there's always cars parked there or a row of scooters in an alley. It's it's kind of hard to tell. Sometimes,、yeah. if a road is an alley in Taiwan, <laughs> yeah. But、uh, even though I'm a Taiwanese, it's、mm -hmm. something I can never do. Yeah, I'm、you、a terrible to, driver. To ride, to drive in an yeah, alley, yeah, 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 it's really scary, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 好，这边呢，看到 road。Alley, OK， 不会分不清哦。其实看一下中文翻译就很明白他们的差异了。Road 呢，就是我们中文说的路、道路。比方说呢，像是罗斯福路 ，OK， 它就是 road 是比较大的。那相对于路呢 ，OK，Alley、okay, 呢是比较小的，就是巷弄。比方说呢，像我们文章里面，我们的作者呢就是在这个巷弄里穿梭，然后就迷路了。OK， so while we're on this topic， we can also talk about other words like intersection， which is a place where roads cross each other. There is usually a traffic light or a stop. Sign at an intersection to help guide traffic. Okay, that's an intersection. Also, intersections are where most likely there are pedestrian crossings where you can cross、mm -hmm. the street. Okay, in Taiwan, I see that lane is used quite often, which is also a narrow road and often in a rural area. In other parts of the world, you come across names of roads like First Avenue. I don't think in Taiwan you guys use Avenue, right? Um, I think very rare. Very rarely, yeah. yeah. Or Lansdowne Drive. Drive is another、yes. uh, word that we use、yes. for road as well. It can be quite confusing to remember all these different <laughs> names, actually. <laughs> 嗯 ，OK， 这边呢，我们就讲到说，其实诶，英文里面有有很多种讲这个路的讲法，比方说呢，像是 intersection 就是讲这个交汇的地方，比方说像十字路口就是 intersection。那另外呢，还有这个巷弄呢，很常在英文里面我们会另外一个单词 lane。那另外呢，还有一些在台湾比较少看到的。
的，像是这个 avenue，avenue avenue 中文会翻译为大道，或者是呢、嗯、像 drive，drive drive 呢在中文有的时候呢，看它的用途哦，有的时候呢，当我们是像是比方说在讲路名的时候，它也会被翻译为大道，但是呢，很多时候 drive 也可以指，比方说像你车库出来的这种车道，它也是 drive， 所以呢，这个真的是要看前后文哦，那大家就是知道说这些字其实就是呃路名，大概就是像这个罗斯福路啦，<笑>或者是这个、呃、现在以前还有这个凯达格兰大。道等等 ，OK， 这些不同的路名。OK， so that's um our basic sample. Um, I think we talked about most of everything in that sample. Now we are going to take a look at our advanced sample. OK, so let's take a look at it now. Advanced sample. I think every kid has at least one time in their life when they feel hopelessly lost. In my case, the incident occurred when I accompanied my mom to a department store at age five. No sooner had we gotten inside than I was already running circles around my poor mother. She told me to follow her, which I did, until I saw a toy display that I couldn't take my eyes off of. I was enthralled, and I didn't realize until about ten minutes later that Mom had moved on without me. I wandered the halls calling for her, but as the minutes passed, I began to panic. Tears welled up in my eyes as I became desperate. Suddenly, I spotted a figure that looked like my mom. I ran up and flung my arms around her, sobbing loudly. But when I looked up, I realized I was hugging a confused-looking stranger. I immediately stopped crying out of sheer embarrassment. Luckily, this was a kind stranger. She asked if I was lost. And took me to the information desk to have them call for my mother over the intercom. Just a minute later, my mom rushed over and hugged me tightly. I learned two important lessons that day: to pay attention to my surroundings and to remember to listen to mom. Okay, so this writer wandered off from his or her mom. Okay, this is how people get lost, children and adults alike. They wander off to check out something without telling anyone, right? <laughs> yeah, like a toy display. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, wander 这个动词呢，就是闲晃了。那 wander off 呢，就是闲晃着，不见了，不知道跑到哪里去了。那你也可以说呢 ，wander around. Okay, 在什么地方闲晃，或是呢，直接我们也可以说 wander 后面加上一个地方哦，表示是徘徊。Mm、hmm. And this writer used a lot of descriptive language that helped to visualize how he or she was feeling at that time and what was going on. At first, the writer felt enthralled, right?、Mm -hmm. Um, you know, enthrall means to hold the attention of someone by being very exciting, interesting, or beautiful. This this toy display enthralled the writer. Uh、mm、huh. -hmm. Enthrall 这个字呢，中文就翻译为使着迷哦，吸引住。比起呢 ，attract 这个字呢，它感觉更加的魔性了。像是这个，比方说 bewitch 或者 fascinate 这样子，好像。Okay, so just when it sounds like this story might end tragically, the writer is reunited with his or her mother, or is she or he? Surprise twist! The writer hugs a confused-looking stranger. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. <laughs> Isn't it? Yes, yes it is yes. so embarrassing.、Um, you'll definitely stop crying out of sheer embarrassment.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so the word "sheer" is used to emphasize the amount or degree of something. For example, after her two-week-long vacation, Nancy was overwhelmed by the sheer volume of work. On her desk. Hmm, I can imagine that. <laughs> okay, sheer 这个字呢，当成形容词是表示轻薄的、轻透的。例如这种会透视的布料，我们就可以说是 sheer fabric， 很薄的。但是它用来表示程度的时候很不一样了，它只是表示完全的、彻底的意思了。例如呢，我们作者这边呢，他是完完全全的、非常非常的羞耻了，或者是呢，我们可以说 it's sheer nonsense。哎，听你在胡说。Okay, so we've actually come to the end of our episode today,、mm -hmm. but I think we had a good discussion about getting lost. You guys have had a chance to listen to two experiences, Sam's experience <laughs> and my experience of getting lost. It was kind of interesting, right? Anyways, we will leave you to write your essay. Hopefully, we gave you some good ideas,、mm -hmm. um, some good writing tips. This is all that we have for today. This is Angeline. This is Sam. Goodbye. Bye.